Oi, it seems to me that we are somehow back in Salt Lake at a familiar hospital. Y'all remember this little area? No idea how we got here, but uh, obviously Ellie is maybe looking for some answers. So this ought to be interesting. This is a flashback. This is two years earlier to where we were when we picked up or when we left last stream. So pretty sure this is the same hospital. That looks like a picture of Ellie's arm. Looks like we got a picture of the brain. The growth has clearly mutated. Let's see if the test results corroborate our theory. This is big. We've got like blood panels. By this time tomorrow, we will have altered the course of history. J. Looks like the cerebellum is circled on this. baby I mean that was quite literally a picture of my arm all right so Ellie there's a good chance that Ellie's here not out of curiosity but out of a desire to confirm her prior suspicions it's clearly been eating at her since this happened and Joel obviously is not interested in breaking down his lie and deconstructing it and being honest with her and so she's decided to take matter into her own hands which is exactly what people Ellie's age do kids get kids get smart when they get into their teens they they know what's going on they can usually tell when their parents are lying to them and if you're not starting to facilitate trust with your kids by being truthful to them they will go out and seek the truth on their own and this is an example of this this is now going to confirm probably her suspicions about what's been going on and what this also has the potential to do is shatter her image of joel which goes to show you just how important this is to her to understand that she's quite she's willing to let this information potentially destroy what she knows of Joel. That's heavy, man. That's really heavy. Oh, man, it's creepy being back here. We were just here as Joel two years ago or whatever it was. And this is what I meant the other night when I said if Joel keeps lying, it's going to kill him. He's so afraid of the distance it's going to put between him and Ellie if he tells the truth. But Ellie's going to go find it, and now it's not even on his terms. It's on hers. Seems like the bodies have been removed.
was one of the ones that wanted to go after the smuggler and the girl. They said, even if we found her or by some miracle found someone else that's immune, it made no difference. Because the only person who could develop a vaccine is dead. off in the middle of the night like that. You talk to me. You don't just leave me a goddamn note. Tell me what happened here. If you lie to me one more time, I'm gone. You will never see me again. But if you tell me the truth, I'll go back to Jackson. No matter what it is. Making a vaccine. So I stopped them. Don't you fucking touch me! I'll go back. But we're done. Oh. Okay. Uh obviously we can all feel the heaviness of that, right? Like and it's interesting because it kind of raises the question of like it hurts for who? I mean it hurts for both. I don't think there's a way that this can square up. Ellie has been experiencing a significant amount of guilt and probably sadness for the fact that she wasn't the cure. She had to she had to completely break down her purpose because the person that never left her and cared for her and the only other first person that was ever reliable for her has been perpetuating a lie that she was not the cure. 
that there were plenty of other people like her, which stripped away the uniqueness of her, and that it wouldn't have worked anyway. And Ellie now hears Joel say, you actually were the cure. And I've been lying to you. And now the person that Ellie feels really close to and emotionally reliant upon is the person who took away the thing that she forever thought was going to be her mark and her purpose. So massive dissonant experience there. I now live to watch other people suffer because I was not used to synthesize a cure. So every person I see now that's dead because of this disease for so long, I've thought was perfectly justifiable because I was not able to provide a cure. Now she has to look back on it and go, those people's deaths are on Joel to some extent. Maybe these were preventable. And Joel didn't, Joel, instead of preventing that, took that away from those folks. And then to hear that the, you know, the only person that supposedly could synthesize a vaccine has now been killed by Joel takes all hope of what she could mean for humanity away even further. Joel, on the other hand, his hesitation there, I don't really think has anything to do with shame. At all. I think what that has to do with, with Joel is that he knows that as soon as he tells her the truth, he loses either way. And she puts him in a massive bind by saying to him, If you lie to me again, I'm gone for good, which, may, which basically is her saying, I know you're lying, so don't do it. And I'm gone for good, knowing that is an option that he just cannot live with. And if you tell me the truth, you're going to live with a shell of me because I'm going to be super angry at you and I can't guarantee that our relationship's ever going to be repaired. His, his struggle there, I think, is him coming to terms with the fact that he has lost her emotionally. And he's put all of his chips into that bag, into the Ellie bag. We saw him in the elevator in The Last of Us 2 notice what he did. We saw him go, oh my God, what have I done? And then at that point, the, he's so cost sunk that he just has to keep going with it. He just has to. And he's the same thing with this lie. You know, again, he could have taken this on his own terms. He could have explained to her what was going on. He could have been honest with her. And I think it would have been devastating to her, but at least it would have reaffirmed for her that Joel trusts her and that Joel, you know, was acting in her best, in her best interest, even if it wasn't in the best interest of humanity. And I think the other thing is that Joel lying to her eventually becomes, for a teenager like Ellie, a you don't trust me with the truth. And I am, and I think she's losing respect for Joel because of that. You don't trust me with that information? Why don't you trust me with that information? I thought we we're supposed to be a team here. And Joel, keep, Joel keeps lying to her, which she's left to make meaning out of that in the form of like, okay, well, either you don't trust me or you know what you did was wrong, right? Like now she's into all of the trying to make meaning out of why would he lie to me about this for so long? That I think more than anything is the viral aspect of what's destroying and eating up their relationship is the why question. And because Joel hasn't been truthful and he's been doubling down on his lies, there's no opportunity to discuss that why. That interaction makes complete sense from a psychological standpoint. 
Ellie's devastated because she has to come to terms with the fact that the person that's been reliable to her has been lying to her this entire time and stripped away her identity. And now she's left to pick up the pieces of that and look at all the fallout from that. And that doesn't feel fair to her because now she has to associate all of that with the decision that Joel made. I think she also knows that she's still emotionally connected with Joel. So anytime that she finds it in her to connect with Joel emotionally or to move towards Joel, it brings her closer to all of this, which is going to be really hard, which brings her closer to dissonance. So her teenage brain has to go into, get the fuck away from me. And she's pushing for distance. Going back to Jackson, but we're done. And that is so devastating for Joel. So devastating. Because he made a decision that was in his own self-interest. And now it's become clear that it was in his self-interest and not in the interest necessarily of her and humanity. And that's in part because of the fact that he's been lying to her. The lie perpetuates the selfishness of it. Have fun clipping that, Sean. Uh, also, I would say, hey, Moon, I, I don't care whether people like the game or not. So I just, like, I, I sort of give a spiel at the beginning of this that, like, people that come in and just kind of shit on the game, I don't really have a big tolerance for. So uh, I'm just kind of watching. Uh, and uh, also, I think, you know, the conversation about whether it would have actually led to a, uh, like, whether the vaccine would have worked, I think is a really interesting conversation but it's also one that i don't really engage much with because of course we don't know that it for sure would have worked but as far as anybody knew that was the best chance we don't know that it wouldn't have worked i think ellie probably would have thought that it'd be fine if she died knowing that at least they tried but now she's hearing that they didn't even have the opportunity to try because joel killed the person that could try it that could do it now, as I've said, I've been a big advocate for the fact that I don't think Ellie is the one to make the decision of whether she should be experimented on because she was 14 and we ask parents to make those calls for people all the time. So I, I, I to some extent, I understand the fact, like, I think the Fireflies were also in the wrong. They didn't explain to Ellie what she was getting into. They told Joel and Joel took it upon himself to try to pull her out of there. So the Fireflies, all the adults in that situation were wrong. Ellie is an innocent bystander in all this. But at the same time, I think even if they told Ellie the risk, there's a chance you could die. I mean, Ellie, ultimately, I don't think gets to have too much of a say other than what her opinion is. And I don't think the Fireflies wanted to hear her opinion because she might have said no. And at that point, they're like, well, too bad. So. So. She might have said yes as well. Right, we don't know how she would have responded to that. But at, at the end of the day, what I love about all of this is that there is no easy answer here. There's no, there's no easy answer to this. There's no right or wrong. And I think too often people try to get into a right and wrong of this. It's perfectly understandable while everybody in why everybody in this did what they did. The Fireflies were looking at it as, hey, we have a potential cure for humanity and we want to do what we can. Ellie looks at it as, this is the only thing that has given me any purpose in my life up until this point. And I've been told that this is a way that I can contribute. So that's what she knows when she doesn't have any information about the fact that she could die in this. Joel has lost everything and has basically been living as a shell of himself until he finds this girl to take care of who actually can also take care of him and gives him life again and gives him purpose and meaning and allows him to rediscover something that matters to him. And then that has the threat of being taken away, in which case Joel then decides, all right, well, I'm going to just go make this about me and my own needs at the mercy of the potential for a vaccine. So I'm taking away this opportunity to care for somebody from literally everybody else so I can do it myself. Like, the whole thing sucks all the way around. It's understandable why Joel lied. Like, I, like I've been saying all the way up until this point, Joel lied because for as long as he lies, he gets to have Ellie around. As Ellie got older, it became increasingly clear he wasn't going to be able to keep that story up. And instead of opening up to her and explaining what was going on and, and being there to say, hey, it's okay if you need some distance from me, he keeps lying. Bad idea. Short-term gain for long-term failure. And then Ellie eventually finds out. And now she has every right to be pissed. 
I don't necessarily even know that she's pissed because she wasn't able to contribute to a vaccine. I think she's pissed because Joel lied to her for so long. And what does that mean for us? Because this is the only person that I have known to be reliable to me. I love this person for who he is and what he's done for me. And he showed a profound amount of love for me that I never saw from anybody. He went to the end of the earth to not bail on me. And that was meaningful to me when I was a kid. But now all of a sudden I'm understanding that decision in a different context. And that makes it harder and, and more impalatable for me to sit with. And then she's sitting with the same dissonance that all of us are sitting with while we watch this. hard man really hard i don't think anybody's a hero here i really don't i think ellie's an innocent bystander but i don't think anybody's a hero we want as the player i think we want joel to be the guy that we saw in the space pod we want joel and ellie to be this unbreakable bond we want him to be the sympathetic and tragic figure but Joel's an incredibly hard person when you really sit and think about it to empathize with. He's, it's very hard to hold him as an idealized figure because of a lot of the stuff that he's done in self-interest. And that's the reckoning that Ellie's coming to with this. Very complicated stuff. So I think Ellie's rage here as she's going on this warpath through Seattle is in part because she misses Joel and wants to avenge him. I think it's partly because she's angry at him and she doesn't know where to direct that energy so she can put it all there. And I think it's out of some level of sadness and disappointment that she never really got to reconcile this with Joel. Because as far as we know, they didn't have a conversation about this post hoc. They had some awkward interactions, but... It does, we don't get a sense that this was ever really talked about and brushed up on. And now think about that. Ellie's got to live knowing that she can't have a conversation with Joel, with Joel about this. She can't hear his explanation. She can't hear him say, I did this because I care so much for you and I couldn't stand to live without you. She has to like make that up for herself. And I think there's an immense sense of loss there. It's not just about the fact that she lost him physically. It's the fact that she lost out on these potential conversations that maybe she wanted to have and was too scared. Maybe she's looking at herself as being too stubborn to have them. But my God, does it make it heavy. I think she knows the way of the world enough at this point to know that he made his decisions based on survival and instincts. I feel like she would do better than those not in this reality of contextualizing everything. But the personal meaning behind finding the truth that hurts her. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he lied. What's incredibly now is that Ellie went on this roaring rampage and revenge even after knowing this. I've been kind of wondering if the reveal would happen somewhere in Seattle about all this. Yeah, no, she already knew it. She already knew it. There's no reconciliation though now. She can only do it symbolically with him. So it's heavy, man. Really, really, really heavy. That's a, that's a very, I, I don't think it's any accident that we see this moment, obviously. Like it's one of the most important ones that she's had. We've seen three very nodal instances for her and what her internal dialogue and conceptualization of Joel is. She's having to struggle with, do I want to carry the idealized version of Joel or do I want to carry the realistic representation of him? And those two things don't necessarily square up. All right, let's keep going. Ellie's struggling, man. Holy crap. And yeah, I agree, Scott. Oh, lordy. We are in bad shape. 
I mean, Jesus, we had to fall asleep on an ottoman. Boy. Dina? Jesse? A film by Carrie and Rogers. Moonlight 1979. I want to see that. Hell yeah. The war, the merrier. Hey, look, Joel. It's your favorite. And so here we are, right? We've seen a couple times where Ellie has talked to Joel, like even this, right? She sees that poster and she says, here you go, Joel, your favorite, which tells me that over the course of these two years, Ellie has found it within herself to empathize with why Joel did what he did. That she got there. She was going to say, you know what? He did it because I told him in that house back in Jackson that everybody had left me except for him. And in that moment, he made it his business not to leave me. And he did it even with that cost. And I think Ellie can come to appreciate that. To say, you know what? I get it, man. At the end of the day, I appreciate it. And then that makes me think that maybe the most devastating part of this entire thing is that she doesn't get to take care of Joel by saying to him, thank you. I'm alive because of you. She never got to say that to him. He died thinking that he let her down. He died thinking that she was going to hate him for the rest of her life because they never reconciled this. And she doesn't get the opportunity to take care of him by saying thank you. And Ellie's as much of a caretaker as Joel is. That, to me, is maybe the most tragic part of this whole thing. Grief's rough, man. Yeah, on top of thinking that she'd be killed with him, right? Yeah, so either either he died and Ellie survived yeah. and won't ever, and, you know, Jesse? hates him, or Ellie also died. Uh, guys? <laughs> they never say thank you, only you're welcome. All the more... Impactful it would be that Ellie say thank you. Where are those two? <clears throat> Ellie's not exactly yelling loud either. Just leave Tommy. He's out here because of me. Maybe you could take her back. 
she's not going to leave without you. Yeah. Screw it. Let's get to home. This aquarium that girl told you about. Tommy hasn't found Abby yet. We'll post up there until he does. And you're good with leaving Dina by herself? Her orders. Okay. Let's go tell her we're leaving then. I'll just meet you up front. Do it. Your map showed the aquarium along the shore. Should be. Did you see that little bit of relief on Ellie's face, despite kind of the "oh god, this is crazy" when Jesse said she ain't leaving without you. I think that was a big relief for Ellie to hear from Jesse, because I'm sure, understandably so, that Ellie would be worried that Ellie or that Dina being pregnant and then Jesse comes by would mean that maybe her and Dina don't work out. Like maybe it, maybe Dina decides, you know what, I got to go with Jesse because I'm pregnant and he's a dad or whatever. But Dina has really shown herself to be loyal to Ellie. And I'm honestly a little bit surprised that Ellie's as embracing of that as she is. But the only reason that I can bring myself to agree with why Ellie would be so okay with Dina taking care of of her the way she is is because of her internalized attachment with Joel. I think because she facilitated secure attachment with him, it's given her a bit of a template to understand that perhaps other people are available to her as well. And so she can see that as being a possibility from Dina. Getting a little bit of that external reassurance from Jesse that Dina's fully committed to Ellie instead of to him, I think is good. I think it helps keep driving that narrative for her that like there are other folks that can take care of me. I have felt love and care from a person like Joel means I could also get it from an intimate partner. Now I said, I admire Jesse for basically being like, hey, uh, I know that the only reason you're coming, the only way you're coming back is to get Tommy, so let's go do it. I think Ellie leans towards secure attachment now that she had a relationship with Joel. A little bit. So originally i would have said it was probably along the lines of dismissive it was the i can take care of myself i can do this on my own etc cetera, etc cetera. joel showed her that she can be taken care of and i think she has an internalized uh, secure attachment with joel and now it's just a matter of figuring out where to transfer that attachment post mortem for him and that's not an easy thing to do in grief but dina has shown herself to be pretty reliable up until this point and i think is making a case for her for it to be her down this way yeah <sighs> How does anyone stay dry in this city? Is that attachment healthy? Yes. Help me up. Secure attachment's the ideal. Okay, go for it. <clears throat> if anybody's curious about attachment theory, I have a video on YouTube about attachment theory that you can watch. About two okay. hours long. Dina. They were hoping to find Tommy at the aquarium. I didn't tell her you knew. If that's what you're. I wasn't. This aquarium a wolf base? I don't think so. Nora said Abby's hiding out there. You get her to tell you why they did it? Yeah. 
Uh, <clears throat> Joel had a uh, falling out with some fireflies. Now, former fireflies. What kind of falling out? Uh, he was a smuggler. And they disagreed about some goods. Fight broke out, some of them died. Guess they wanted payback. Damn. That change anything for you? Nope. I need to get clear on something. When we find Tommy, you're good with going home. Yeah. You'll be leaving some of those assholes alive. Dina should be back in Jackson. Okay. Good. You notice that Ellie's now protecting Joel? Uh huh. Uh huh. Ellie is trying to maintain her internal image of Joel. This is this all the more fuels my hypothesis that she has since forgiven him for that and come around on it. It's kind of what happened, but it, she could have she could have told him full bore. But I think that would immediately make Jesse go. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Why are we trying to? Well, I, uh, it puts people in a position to empathize with those who killed Joel. And I don't think Ellie can stand seeing the other people that are in her close circle right now go against Joel. She is taking care of his image by staying very reticent in how much she discloses about him. I don't think she can bear people seeing Joel that way. Seeing people... See, having people see him the way that she might have saw him in that moment that we just witnessed. She's taking care of him. And she's taking care of her own internal image of him in the process. Now, Ellie has done a lot of, like, kind of telling people what they need to hear. I don't know if she actually is telling Jesse the truth here about whether she's willing to go home after they find Tommy. We'll see if she holds to that. Center. Sure hope so. Another convention center. Okie doke. No. Why would they, Jesse? Okay, before we talk to him here, he asked that question. My, my inclination is to say no. They, they could have killed us. I, they absolutely could have killed us. So why would they come back for us? They had their opportunity. If they were if they were going to kill us, they would have done it. So I I don't think we're in danger of them coming back to Jackson. What do you mean? I mean we're going through a lot of their people in their city because of what they did. Didn't Abby and her friends come to Jackson because of something Joel did? This place isn't like Jackson. I mean Joel and Tommy helped Abby when she got attacked. These people are trying to kill everyone around them. I mean, they shot you on sight, didn't they? Yeah, they did. So both Jesse and Dina at various points in their conversations with Ellie have tried to introduce the idea that maybe the people that Abby was with were justified in killing Joel, which I think is a pretty ballsy play when you've got Ellie here. And part of me wonders if that's their way of trying to get into Ellie, like, hey, maybe this isn't worth it. Like, maybe you're in danger. Maybe we could just kind of let bygones be bygones on this. We've done shit with good reason. Maybe they had good reason. And again, I think Ellie can't bring herself to acknowledge that. She has to kind of split into this camp that no, Joel was good. Right? You even hear her say, well, she, she helped Abby out. 
Which I don't really know how she knows that, but that's beside the point. She's trying to preserve Joel as best she can. How long has Dina been with you? Only a couple days. When we first got here, she fucked up a bunch of wolves. We've been impressed. I bet. You don't cross that girl. Do you think it would make her feel like she's betraying Joel if she was honest? She's also biding by his wish of her keeping her immunity to herself. Being truthful about why they came after Joel would mean she outs herself in the process. That could certainly be part of it as well. And she's been told by Joel that it would be dangerous for her to come out, but... I, I continue to think that the reason Joel doesn't want Ellie to tell folks that that's the case is because it makes him look bad, and it would have potentially made Ellie ma more angry at him. Like, I think Joel's very self-aware of what it is that he did. And so, if all of a sudden people go, wait a minute, Ellie's immune, I thought you were supposed to go to the Fireflies, I thought that was supposed to mean a cure, all of a sudden he can't quite keep his story straight. And he's trying to save face here. So I really think that that was more about Joel trying to save face so Ellie doesn't bail on him than anything else. Than trying to keep her safe. If that makes sense. That's true. Tommy could have told her. That's, that's a good point as well. Tormentra. Once, once a kind, empathetic teenager, Tormentra was always bullied for being soft, but everything changed when a latent genetic mutation emerged, allowing her to convert the mental anguish of others into kinetic energy. The worse the pain, the more powerful the result. Now her day job as a criminal psychologist allows her to absorb the worst things in people's lives and use it as literal ammo against those who prosecuted her, or persecuted her. Many suspect, suspect Tormentra of feeding off the hurt, of those who got in the way of her prior outburst, creating never-ending cycle of suffering. That sounds a lot like Ellie. We got enough for some uh, kind of upgrades to be doing here, huh? Uh, there's power because it's connected to a soldering iron, apparently. I don't know. Jesse, please move. Thank you. I have no idea, Feather Dance. I don't ask those types of questions. Hmm. Seems like I got about all the supplies I could possibly have. Uh, maybe a... Maybe a Multov wouldn't be too bad to have, just in case. why more people don't think to do that king through here where else were we gonna go jesse i just gotta ask why didn't she tell me about it the pregnancy ask her that listen I, i'm sure 
She'll tell you about it when she... Oh god, go in the building. Oh god. You don't see me. You don't see me because you're blind. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. There's so many. Oh no. Trespassers. Oh run. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh God, oh God, oh God, this is so bad. Oh, this is so bad. Oh no, oh no. I got them, right over here. Oh God, oh, this is so bad. No, this is not a time for scavenging, Ellie. Not ideal, man. God damn it. That'll do it. These wolves, man. So trigger happy. They're at war with this fucked up cult. What are you talking about? Seraphines or something, Seraphites. Scars is all I've heard them called. You run into any? No. You're lucky. All right. Well, that could have been worse, I guess. I mean, not really fond of going super loud like that, but did what we had to do. I mean, I got, there were so many of them. I don't really know how you don't go loud there. All's good. We're good. Hey, I want to use this as an opportunity to say if you're watching me live on Twitch right now, thank you all for being here. Taking some time out of your night to hang out and chat and be with each other. I appreciate you keeping chat spoiler free. If you're currently watching me on YouTube, I want to say how much I appreciate you watching these VODs and supporting me over there means a lot to me that you would do that. I hope by now you've liked and subscribed. One of the best ways that you can support this stream, if you think it's really cool, is to tell other people about it. Let them know that you think this thing is cool. Share my videos. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. But y'all are the best. We got lots of cool games we're going to do with this, and it's been an absolute pleasure to play through this game with you. I hope my analysis of what's going on has helped add some depth to your experience of these games.
this absolutely ridiculously gorgeous game. Who's this guy? Outdoor sportsman. Ten things to know before you skin that deer. Bargain hunter. How to find amazing deals on knives, cameras, night vision, goggles, and other gear. Fifteen hunting rifle scopes reviewed and rated. Nice. Throw that in the old backpack. up with all these posters it's a bunch of comics wait what was happening here a gathering for people who were really into this stuff like you basically we were born in the wrong time man yeah i would agree I don't know. I've been looking for Maxims, King, but, uh, yeah, that Vogue one would suffice. What were you saying before about Dina? You said she'll tell me when... Once things are wrapped up here. I guess at some point it'll get pretty hard to hide it. Do you know if she's gonna keep it? I don't. No offense, man, but these are questions for Dina, my dude. I sort of triangulated myself by answering yes, but I think Ellie telling the truth there was for the better. I mean, I don't really know why a lie would work out well for her, but I think the rest of it is like, look, you got to let Dina tell you. I'm sure she has her reasons for not doing it. These are all things you can ask her when the time comes, my friend. like look around i just like don't want to miss anything in these games hey look at that look at this mess the aquarium it's right next to that ferris wheel of course it is he's hoping tommy has the same info everything's always so far away oh, that's fine damn it looks like we're swimming Sure are, broski. <laughs> Swim through this algae? Ugh. Do I dive down? See if there's anything in here? Why not? Anything good? think man somebody had to somebody had to render out the, the ocean floor here look at that fish that little salmon Yeah, f the reason these cities are destroyed is because Fedra also, like, bombed them. They didn't just leave them. They, they okay. did some damage. Working on it. Oh, nice. 
nice. We got stalkers. That's fun. We'd rather not go loud if we can help it. I say that. Every time I've said that, we've ended up going loud. I know this stalker is relatively close here, too. Oh, yeah, that's him. I... To your left! See what I mean? Every time. Just now, you know, no such thing as going quiet. Anything good in here? There's gotta be, right? useless how do I get up there <laughs> you know the okie dokie clip I know Now that's it. We hope. This place looks like a dead end. Yeah. I think you're right. To whatever sorry asshole finds me. I can barely keep my hands steady, but, every, but everyone on base needs to know. I got ambushed on my way to relieve Misha at the monorail lookout. One of the scavs... For scars, I'd swear he looks just like our boy Gray. Fuck, I'm so lightheaded. Someone please put a bullet in that fucking snake's face for me. And tell Misha I'm sorry. I tried to hustle. Jensen. Damn. That's a fresh death, man. Alright, let's get out of here. Get out of here, Jesse. Go, Team Jackson. Fuck these motherfuckers. Couldn't have said it better. Hell yeah. This way. Okay. Back to you. Back in the water. <laughs> right, Marty? I 
I would have come, you know, if you told me you were leaving. I, I just... I didn't think you'd be okay with all this. I looked up to Joel. What happened to him was messed up. I would have come. Yeah, I mean, let Jesse like make that. You a lot too, you know. I used to think I had a crush on you. <laughs> really? I mean, you're handsome and whatever, but I'm not into your type. What, Asians? Yeah, that's obviously what I meant. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love that. Um, so Ellie fell into a trap that I think a lot of us fall into, which is we make assumptions about folks and then we make decisions based on those assumptions rather than allowing people the autonomy to make decisions for themselves. If Ellie didn't want Jesse to come, that's one thing. Like, if Ellie was to say, I didn't want you to come on this. Whether it's because I don't trust you or I just didn't want you to, that's one thing. But when she says to Jesse, I didn't think you'd want to be involved in this, that's taking away his autonomy to make his own decision. And now all of a sudden he's left to operate off of her perception of him instead of the reality of whatever his conviction is. If she asks him and he says, no, I'm not into it, that's fine. But to make that decision based on what you think somebody else is going to do is, in a lot of ways, a waste of time. Like, focus on your own convictions, focus on what it is that you want, what requests you're going to make, and then allow other people the autonomy to say yes or no or to be ambivalent about it. And you can see that. I mean, Jesse's sort of disappointed in that, and that makes sense. It's frustrating to interface with folks who do that a lot. Like, you don't get to decide what he wants and doesn't want. And even if it is to mitigate possible rejection, that's still unfair to him. You can't... So here's the thing. You can't make your anxiety about being rejected by a person that other person's problem by operating on your projections of that person instead of the reality of what that person has to say if you want close meaningful relationships with folks you have to allow them the autonomy to say no and if you're going to deeply personalize something as a rejection to the point that it changes the nature of the relationship for you then that says more about the relationship than it does the circumstance So it's okay to be like rejection averse, but at the same time, like him saying no to that may not even be a rejection. It may just be him asserting whatever his values and autonomy is, and that's fine. Respect for that, I think, is something all of us want. So to strip that away from somebody else, I think, is unfair. And by asking people to do stuff, it's not putting pressure on them. It's asking them what they want to do. It's not, if you say, hey, would you mind coming to the post office with me because I get really anxious when I go to the post office? You're not putting pressure on that person to say yes. You're just saying, hey, I trust you with that and would you mind helping me out? If that person says, and then it's on that person to say, yes, I would be happy to do that. I would, I would be, I'm totally down to do that. Cool, then they've agreed to do that and you get to have a person come support you. If that person says, no, nah, sorry, I'm busy today, or I'm, I'm not really into that, or whatever, then cool, they've said no. Putting pressure on a person is if that person then says to you, no, sorry, I'm, I'm not in a place to do that, or I can't do that, and then you keep going, come on, come on. If you guilt trip people, that's putting pressure on them. But making a request at the outset is not putting pressure on people. That's an excuse people make to not make their needs known. And then if you resent people for not meeting your needs as a result of that, it's unfair and very frustrating to interact with. Real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt, asked the rabbit? Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you're real, you don't mind being hurt. I know you're upset. What if we talked like this for a bit? Would that help? 
Okay. I didn't mean to grab you like that. I hope I didn't hurt you. Even mommies are scared sometimes. I'm okay. I'm really scared too. I get how angry you are. I miss him too, but you can't scream like that. I just want cross out. I just need cross out. I know. I love you so much. I won't let anything happen to you. I love you too. This can be an incredibly useful way to engage with a child. It takes the intensity of interpersonal dialogue out of it and allows people to respond on their own time and in a way that's accessible to them. It makes your words tangible and concrete so a person can read over it and make meaning out of it and then respond thoughtfully. It's a great tactic to use with kids sometimes, particularly if you're upset with them. Highly recommend that tactic if you're having a hard time communicating with a child. Also, adults can do that too. Writing notes to each other can be really Pretty helpful. Pretty messed up. Putting fungus in the kids section. Mushrooms didn't exactly carry the same meaning back then. True. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Kids used to think these were cute. Yeah, now we absolutely don't. All right, we got some more notes. Um, what I know. God damn it. Navigating the journal is frustrating. Okay. What I know. They're former fireflies from the hospital. It makes sense. It's what my gut said all along. The WLF took a bunch of them in after they disbanded. They traveled to Jackson specifically to torture Joel. Killing him wasn't enough. Abby's hiding out in the aquarium. What I don't know. Why is Abby hiding out? Does it matter? Where are the rest of them? Do they matter if I get Abby? No. Where's Tommy? Still alive? He has to be. Did I tell Dina and Jesse about this? No. They can't know what Joel did. They won't understand. Do I understand? I think you do. Do you have a favorite book as a kid? Yeah. Battle Ghosts. It's about these space marines who fight off... Ghosts? Alien ghosts. <laughs> Sounds like something you'd like. <laughs> what about when somebody beats around the bush about wanting to help but will not come out and ask? Does one act on the hints or wait for them to ask directly even though they know the person won't ask? I think the way that you navigate that effectively is to say to a person, hey, I get a sense that you're hinting that you want help. This time I'm willing to act on those hints, but for future reference, I would appreciate it if you would ask me for help directly, because if you don't do that, I'm not going to act on hints. It's okay to appreciate clear and direct communication and hold a person accountable to doing that and setting whatever boundaries you want to set if you're not willing to. Because at some point you do become an enabler of that behavior if you act on hints. And if it's frustrating you that that person's beating, on the, or beating around the bush and not asking directly, and that's starting to wear on you, you need to make that known to that person. Okay. What about you, smartass? Well, my mom only had this one kid's book, The Root Child, about this boy who turns into a forest to save his village. Okay. To keep things fresh, though, my mom would improvise different endings. <laughs> this one time, the boy just let the whole village die. It gave me nightmares. <laughs> it's dark. That's really sweet she did that. Yeah. Mom's a sweetheart. She's gonna go crazy when she hears about this baby. Sure. I could see that. So assuming we survive this... Uh-huh. I say as soon as we get back, we get drunk and play some board games. Oh, yeah? I want to feel normal. Oh, that sounds great. Except I don't think Dina's going to be drinking. Well, she can stay sober. <laughs> baby complicates stuff. I think Ellie's probably still a little bit insecure that that baby may take Dina away from her. And I can't say I blame her. But see, this is the thing that silence and lack of availability for communication does for folks. 
is you start to project your insecurities onto that person. So the way that Jesse and Ellie converse about Dina is going to be a reflection of their own projections and assumptions rather than what they know of Dina. Which is why you're usually better off just being like, all right, let's let Dina what tell us. Up here? Let's just hold on to that thought. You really have it in for each other. I think it goes back years. Wonder how it all started. Well, Oof. this place is fucked. Blood's still wet. Let's get back to the street. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that we're seeing fresh bodies around here. That's a little intense. Now the question is, how do we get out of here? Monkey wrench? Hell yeah. Alright friends, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this without killing the dog. gonna try we don't have anything come on to teach me salsa yeah. dancing. Oh, shit. That sounds pretty great right about now. You? Grab a handful of books and a quiet room and just breathe. Right here. All right. You might have some. Got a scent, girl? <laughs> Guessing we're trying to get up on that scaffolding. Sorry, chat. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't really think that killing that person was going to alert that other dude. I'm 
Sorry. Well, I think that was the last one. Yeah. This place makes me appreciate Jackson, man. Me too. We tried. I mean, if I was going to have to go through this scaffolding, I don't really know that I was going to be able to get around that. Again, to this point, I have no reason to believe these people are going to show me mercy. So we're just surviving. It's the world we live in, man. Liam, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. Last of Us 2 is going very well so far. I hope you're doing well, too. all this oh baby all right maybe I didn't need to go up here oh man could I have got I'm gonna be big sad if the way I was supposed to go was through that water man Come on! I could have got all the way around that! Oh, I didn't think to go under! Oh, that sucks. That sucks! Oh my god, I could have got out of there only killing one person. Oh, no! Oh! God. Oh, that hurts, man. Why don't we head up to that bridge and get our bearings? Oh, son of a yeah, bitch. Thinking. Oh, well. <laughs> this is what I mean. I only played the game one, one time before this time. So, stuff like that's bound to happen. Maybe. Hard time believing that Abby would know that I'd come after her. So, okay, so this is just speculation here, but, you know, we've had the ability to be Abby already at this point in the game. And even though it was for a short period of time, if I'm Abby, I'm thinking to myself, I spared her. Would she really come after me? Like, I don't know that you... Like, Jackson's pretty cushy. I'm still alive. She did whatever she was supposed to do. I don't know that Abby would specifically be hiding out from us. Like, that seems pretty far-fetched that Ellie would come after this because she doesn't necessarily know what my... Well, I guess maybe she kind of does know what my relationship is. Maybe not, because Nora was... It took a while to be like, oh, you're her. I don't know. Like, I'm curious about... Abby hiding out also. Seems a little egotistical to think that it's because of me. You know? Oh, that's right. Abby's locked up, so... I remember her mentioning Abby being locked up, but I didn't really have a ton of context for why. Freaking far away, man. Jesus. What the 
better be crossing this. We could use that road. It's pretty fucking far. Or we use that. So y'all notice how Ellie is Ms. Self-Sufficient, I can do this on my own, but whenever somebody like Joel or Jesse is nearby, she follows their lead. Like, there's still such a large part of Ellie that I think is comfortable being a follower and being taken care of. Let's try through here. So what's the plan? And I'm not trying to read into this more than anything. It's just an observation, right? Like she's she's all like, I can do this by myself. I don't need Jesse, blah, 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 blah. But every time they're there, they're the ones that are like, let's go over here. Here's this idea. And she's quick to follow. She doesn't, she's not like stubborn and being like, oh no, fuck you. I'm going my own way. Take these guys out and steal their boat. Definitely taking their boat. It's up to them if they want to get in our way. Hopefully it's a small crew. Agreed, brother. Another coffee shop. It's almost like we're with Jesse. <clears throat> hmm. Place is wrecked. You don't say. Making a lot of noise. Got it. Come on. A lot of noise. This way. Come on. I'm glad we have tack lights by Bell and Howell. Am I right? Thank God for these military grade flashlights that can survive all the elements. Need to give me some tack glasses so that the blue of the sun doesn't burn my eyes out. Oh shit. Need a hand? Sniper squad is close. I repeat, sniper sighted at the marina. Like the trespasser. Any nearby units report. Over. Shit. You four, take the land bridge to the marina. The rest of you, we hold here. Wait for orders. What the fuck? We're supposed to wait here while our guys are being sniped? We have our orders. We'll have more than enough people to take care of one sniper. I wonder if it's Archangel. Turn your light off, Jesse, you knucklehead. What are you doing? I mean, I don't know. We I don't know who the sniper is. I, I guess we could probably deduce that there's a chance that it's Tommy, but why would Tommy be sniping people? Come on, baby. him he'll be gone by the time we get there abby is where he'll be headed so if we just what fall, if he's in trouble he can take care of himself jesus christ the best way to help tommy is to go after abby you do this i'm not saving your ass again
Ellie sure does have a lot of Joel in her, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, man. She, she tells... Oh, man, she says, I don't even care about Abby. As long as we get Tommy back, we get Dina home. We're good, Jesse. We're we're all good. This is about the greater good here. And then push comes to shove, and we got a boat that can take us to, Al to Abby. I'm getting on that boat. She just betrayed the shit out of Jesse. Had she... Now, I, I mean, again, this is where she's in a bind. If she says to him, no, fuck you, I'm killing Abby before we leave, I, Jesse's probably going to say that I'm staying with Dina. I'm getting her back to Jackson. Good luck. Ellie is so dead set on avenging Joel's death that she's willing to take everybody else with her, including Jesse. She's willing to blow up her relationships. She's just like Joel. And I think the more she does this, the more she connects with Joel. She sees this as the ultimate form of love because that's what Joel gave her. Joel blew apart everything in order to save her and to maintain a connection with her. And that's what she's doing now, probably out of a sense of indebtedness to him, that she owes this to him. There's a whole theory of family therapy that's all about that, called contextual therapy. It's all about ledgers. But she's self-destructive to some extent and blowing everything up because she wants to show this one person. And I really think it comes down to the thank you that she was never able to give him. Engine back up. Where should I put in? Park it on the other side. Copy. So now we're going to try to steal a shitty boat. I just sent four soldiers to Dude, I don't know if come on. We've gotta end it. I legitimately don't know if I can get that boat without killing these people. Can I not get over this?
All right, nice and easy, Ellie. Oh. Let's look for supplies. Get our minds off this shit for a second. This is tense, man. So tense. Where is the boat? Let's go! Let's go! Please, please. Girl. Let's go! The boat. Let's go! Go! Go, Ellie, go, 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 go! Alright! Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god, we got it! Oh my god! Oh Jesus Christ! Come on, chat. We got this. No one's following. Right. Where's the Ferris wheel? How clutch was that, man? We got through that whole thing. I did, I killed what? One guy? I'm okay with that. That was smooth, baby. Smooth. Please go through. Holy shit, this is intense. All right, let's hop out for a second. Whew, I 
And look at that, we're rewarded with a trading card. Cephalophod. Long thought to be a myth passed down through superstitious sailors, this extra-dimensional entity has taken the form of a gargantuan bioluminescent squid. Hiding from others of his kind, this hyper-intelligent being has taken a liking to our seas and the diverse life forms living within them. Unfortunately, Cephalophad has a temper to match his smarts, conducting acts of tentacle-based terrorism against fishing vessels, oil tankers, and other sea craft, which it believes are part of a cycle of harm against the world's oceans. Our only hope might be Big Blue. Alright, uh, we gotta open this gate. Of course that gate's locked. Why wouldn't it be? Doo -doo -doo. Let's see what we got here. Anything good for us to be able to open this old gate? Huh? Hey, look. Look at that, Old Faithful just chilling here. You, wherever there's water, Naughty Dog's got a pallet. Oh, what's this? Beth, if you're reading this, then I'm toast. I hope it wasn't those scar fuckers, but some blaze of glory. Bigger hope is you remember where we hid the stash? Code is 701264. It's not much, but it's all I have. I want you to take it. Be well, Randall. Alright, we got a code to a safe. Abby, I begged you to stop. You brought this on yourself. Well, that's how you gotta. That's how you gotta rationalize it, Ellie. Look at this little vent up here. here not even that good let's go ahead and back up out of here not even that good okay where's this go but think about it this way right so ellie's begging abby to stop if ellie gets a hold of abby and one of abby's friends begs her to stop is ellie gonna stop Ellie can't, Ellie can't be used in empathy here if she's going to finish this out. Empathy stops, empathy stops people from doing dumb shit if they take a second to engage with it. All right, 70, 12, 64. What have we got? Got some pills, got some ammo, got some stash. The cycle of revenge never stops if you choose to participate. Yep. And that's the thing, right? We conceptualize we conceptually think that we would all be the bigger person. But I think all of us can also to some extent empathize with Ellie. We can understand why she's doing this. And that dissonance is uncomfortable. Oh, thank God they don't make me do that again. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, boy. Seattle whitewater rafting. No. 
You better not be out of gas. Got it. Thank God. At the monorail. Yeah, the boat sucks, Skater Man. It's definitely a shitty boat. But I guess I can't be too picky, can I? It's a better boat than a nun boat. Hey, what is he? What do, you, what do we got here? What do we got here? Mr. Dead Guy. Whoa. If any wolves read this, warn Isaac and the others. The rumors are true. There's a new infected out there. Looks like something made it halfway to a bloater and took a turn. Ugly motherfucker. Maybe all the rain around here caused a mutation? No idea. Moose, he's... It was slow, so I put it down easy, but when I went to check it out, all the pustules on it exploded. Whole right side of my body's burned. Some kind of acid. If you see one of these shambling things, one of these shambling towards you, stay back. Well, that's convenient that we call them shamblers. Sorry, Chief. Man, you had a rough go at it, huh? Yeah, I think a bloater's what ripped our head off. Uh, or almost did. Shamblers are the things that we fought in those tunnels with Dina that explode after they die. Oh! Damn it. You all don't see me. Don't mind me just chilling in my boat in the distance. let them fight it out we're gonna go scavenge this monorail real quick I love how those people didn't even have time to pay attention to a boat coming into this area Ooh, what is this Don't mind me, folks in the building. I'm just trying to get some sweet loot. Relive the fun of my childhood where I enjoyed swinging on things. Misha, got word that you're replacing me. Wanted to give you a few pointers about this nest. One, the scars are sneaky bastards. Don't just watch the street, check the rooftops. They got their own sharpshooters. Two, keep the infected alive. When the scars cross, they have to deal with them. Once they reveal their positions, take them out. 
took a cup took out a pair of cultists and in arm now and am now watching the infected devour their bodies it's fucking glorious and remember don't get cornered may your survival be long and your death be swift Beck this doesn't seem like you quite made it but alright so it's looking to me oh jeez they set that boat on fire it's looking to me like we're gonna have to take these people out I don't really know how we don't like if our path is through that building we're getting closer to the ferris wheel I think we use this sexy position right here to do that How is that not a headshot? How is that not a headshot? Oh, bullet drop. That's right. <laughs> Damn it. Tommy even taught me about this. This is a optimal position here. Where are you? Now we can approach safely. Yeah, the rope would be handy to take with us. I agree. Check this out real quick. See if there's maybe anything worth exploring for us. Guessing probably not. Let's go to Bagel Bros. See this getting all stacked up. Go down the stairs real quick. I'm gonna feel bad if this entire thing could have been avoided, but I don't get a sense that it could have. I don't see well, I guess maybe I could get them both through here, couldn't I? Yep, alright, well. I mean it seems a little ridiculous that I would have drove the boat through here with all these people having guns that would have clearly opened fire on me, so. I bet Ellie could go for a bagel right now. It'd be real tasty. I love me a bagel. Oh no. Come on. Does she even know what a bagel is? I don't know. That's a good question. I gotta believe Joel probably said something about what a bagel is to her. You feel bad? I mean, I feel bad killing anybody I don't need to kill. I mean, my goal here is to get to Abby. And hopefully, maybe she'll tell me why she killed Joel. But I, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't need to needlessly kill folks. I have no idea why the, why the scars care about what they care about, you know?
Arcade. Neat. Bills are good. Love that there's gears inside of these broken arcade machines. Nice touch. Oh, hell yeah. Moto flare. Oof. That was one competitive round of air hockey, huh? Um, I think at this point, maybe go for damage on this guy. This thing, this thing's turning into some dirty hairy action. Little DDR? Hell yeah. Shit. This was like a really competitive game of DDR, huh? A lot of, a lot of real competitive arcading going on here. Jesus Christ! Well, that was a really competitive game of Urban Rush, huh? Sore loser bloater over here. Ooh, little Papa Shot action. And if I wasn't hellbent on slaying everybody in Seattle, this would be a pretty cool place to come hang out. Kazakh Bright. Orphaned by the Civil War on Titan, young Kazakh Bright vowed revenge on the future Alliance, whom he held responsible for initiating the conflict. Growing up to become a renowned communication engineer for Spark Century 22, he developed quantum signaling technology that allowed for instant communication across vast distances. Though it gave Spark an advantage, they still suffered defeat after defeat against the future Alliance. Boosting his quantum communicator for to reach far beyond our star system, Kazakh now tries to contact someone or something capable of helping him seek revenge. Nice. Must have been fun to write those. Jeez, what a pain in the ass building this is. Hey! Oh, that 
that's badass. Anything good? Got some pills. Man, this looks like a land room. Seems like there was a lot of fun guys in here. That's enough of that, Ryan. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up, Ryan. I don't know if anything's ever going to top my keeper joke. That one was, was about as good as I could ever do. Okie dokie. Back to the boat. Almost there. Okay, so have we have we really thought about how we're gonna get the hell back? Like this has been a hell of a journey just to get to this goddamn Ferris wheel. How in God's name, are we getting back to this theater? The sea was angry today, my friends. Wonder if we'll find a Titleist. Ah, the open ocean. Just what I want to be in in this awful ass shitty boat. Oh my god. Holy shit. Ooh. Oh no, 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 no. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. No, 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 no. No. Back to the surface, Ellie. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Calm people live, tense people die. I can make it. That's right. Self-talk your way through this, Ellie. You can make it. Focus on where you're going. Nothing else matters. To the Ferris wheel. Swim as hard as you can. Use everything you learned. Oh. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Nice. Oh man, now we're gonna be all briny. Let's do this. What a beautiful shot this is. Holy crap. God, just all the detail, man. Oh. I love it so much. Okay, we gotta figure out how to get in here.
This is a lot less interesting than the last museum we saw, huh? Oh, lordy. We're gonna stay quiet. As far as we know, there could be people in here. So if you're Ellie here, you gotta work on your nerves. My guess is that the closer she gets, the more anxious she feels, the more her physiological, like her physiology is gonna be more heightened and aroused. Her goal here is gonna be to try to keep her parasympathetic nervous system in as engaged as possible. And she would do that through deep breathing and focusing on where she directs her thoughts. Of course, this is exciting in some ways because we're close. This could be the culmination of everything we've worked for. This could also be disappointing, but we have to focus on why we're here. At this point, I mean, we've come this far. If we can't let something stupid get us slipped up. That's what killed Joel. That's what's killed a lot of folks that we've been around. So we're gonna stay on full alert here all the way. We're just gonna keep focusing on breathing and where we're going. We're not gonna think about the implications of what we're doing, anything like that. There'll be time for that after it happens. What is all this stuff? Reverse osmosis water. I mean, you could read the sign, Ellie. A little ironic that we're in a flooded aquarium. supplies as we can. I'm going to be careful not to have my flashlight on too much, just in case. Oh, where the fuck Although this you? place does seem like it's pretty derelict relative to a lot of the places that we've been. Smile! Don't be crabby. Okay. Time and a place, sign. This isn't it. always another way, Ellie. Don't you know you're in a video game? Sorry, dog, but I mean, it's just me or you at this point. Oh, this does not look good. How was that dog here by itself? And why would it be? Why would it attack me like that? What is this? God. The fuck happened here? I had no choice, Kaius. No choice. That dog's on top of me. I gotta kill it. What? People doing makeshift surgeries in here? What the hell?
Oh shit, I hear people. Okay. I just want to explore the environment a little bit so that I know what we're dealing with more than anything else. All right, we know there's people here. Owen Moore. Oh, oh shit. Man. Really? Oh, shit. Could she be here? Owen is the guy who was with Abby back when we played with her. He's the one who was talking about the pregnant woman that was with them. He was also like the guy who basically like said, let's finish this. All right, it sounds like there's people in here. People don't come back on that island. How many times does Abby risk her life for you? She chose this. I'm not fucking going there. Then don't. Go back. Hands up. Where's Abby? You're that girl from Jackson. Tell me where she went. How do we know you won't kill us? You give her what she wants and we're dead. You guys can survive this. I just need her. Bullshit. Get over here. Point to where she is on this map. And then you. It better fucking match up. Okay. What are you doing? She's probably dead anyway. It is not worth it. Stop! We can talk Back about it. Back the fuck up! to where she is. Fucking Christ! <laughs> 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 Let's go. Let's go. It's all right. Oh, 
Oh man. Don't worry, we're not ending on that. Ooh. That's okay. So it's that's um uh, mm, wow. I don't know what choice Ellie has there. A lot to take in. She gave them a chance. I mean, she did. She gave them a chance. She said, put it on the map and tell me where she is. She put them in a position to out their friend and have the chance at surviving or not out their friend and potentially die. I think they played the gamble of you need us alive for the information. And if you kill us, you don't get the information. But I, I mean, I, nobody's really a winner there. I mean, this isn't, this isn't a sit down and talk about it kind of situation. Now, she tried Joel's method, but Ellie doesn't have, I don't think the hardened past that Joel had to get to a point where he could use that tactic. Same with Tommy. So I think it's a little intense for her to try to use it. And, and as we've seen, right? Like we've seen so many times where Ellie takes things into her own hands like this. And she, we realize that like, she's not really equipped to do this stuff. She's not, this isn't in Ellie's nature. It was in Joel's. Ellie thinks she can do this stuff, but Ellie needs help. Joel gets shit done because he's ruthless. I think there's some part of us that can kind of, to some extent, admire that because he does get things done. Ellie has too much conflict in her with this. I don't think Ellie wants to kill any of these folks. She wants to kill Abby, but she doesn't want to kill any of these other folks. But she's constantly in a position where she's having to do it because she's not stable in this. And so she ends up killing jo uh, Owen and uh, Mel, who's pregnant. And I'm sure she probably sees Mel pregnant and thinks the first thing she thinks of is Dina. I don't know much. I don't know, really know what other option Ellie has there. I really don't. Other than to tie them up or immobilize them or to make it clear that she's not messing around. And, and she was all threat there. Most people have seen way worse than Ellie pointing a gun at her. Or at them. Now, the part that I really want to talk about is that uh that sounded to me like Joel's voice that very first Ellie I know it was Tommy and I know him and Tommy are brothers they have somewhat similar voices but it definitely sounded like Joel which I don't think is an accident Ellie being in that traumatic of a space where everything is becoming tunnel vision she's sort of dissociating which we've talked about before and the thing that grounds her and brings her back into that moment is somebody saying her name, somebody who sounds like Joel, that she hears is Joel because all she's thinking about in that moment to draw energy from is Joel. That's all she is thinking about. You and I would hear that too. You sort of hear that internal object come out in that moment as a stabilizing force because that's what her tunnel vision is. So she's simultaneously dissociating from that moment where like everything's kind of clouding in and she's freaking out. And then Joel's voice pierces through that as kind of the clarity. And Joel has been the stabilizing force through, for her through this entire chaos. Even in death, that's what Joel is. And so we hear Tommy's voice, but we hear it as Joel because that's where she's at. And then she sees that it's Joel and it kind of jars her and it restabilizes her and she's kind of back in the moment, but she's jarred by all this. And again, I think it's because she's making a bunch of decisions that she doesn't want to make, but she feels like she owes it to Joel to do this. And so we can simul, I think, I mean, there's a, I'm bummed out because there's two, two awful things happened. These two people died and we didn't get the information we wanted. So now everything we've done up until this point is like, damn, what are we doing? Is it worth it? And I think Ellie's kind of asking herself that. I think everybody's asking themselves that. Like, at what point is this not worth it anymore? This is only worth it if Joel is who Ellie has idealized him to be. This is not worth it if Joel is who Joel actually is. 
And there's tension in that for Ellie. Ellie is constantly having to hold on to this idealized Joel or else this is worthless. And only she has that, I think, at this point. I think Tommy has it to some extent. Jesse certainly doesn't have it. Dina doesn't have it. It's just, it's hard. It gets hard to get on board with this other than we feel a sense of connection and obligation to Joel as well. And there's a lot of conflicting experiences we're having here. I think that's five down now, Shelves. All right, so let's see what else we got here. This is just not the time to be pregnant, man. It's just not the time. I feel bad for her. So we made it back. We're all bruised and destroyed, but we got Tommy. Okay, I think that's the game just not rendering it. I'm not going to read into that. Like, that's interesting that that poster's not that anymore. All right, Tommy, where are you? Yeah, look at this. Not all the textures are loading in. Really interesting. I'm gonna get there, this whole area be thawed. Where are you going? Needed some air. What are you guys doing up? Couldn't sleep. Come take a look at this. Thought is to head home via Ellensburg. If we're in Fall City by tomorrow, we're doing good. Hey. They got what they deserved. But she gets to live. Yeah. Is that okay? It has to be. Mm. I'm really not looking forward to going through Idaho again. What you should be worried about is what Maria's gonna do to you when we get home. We've been through worse. <laughs> However, as I was passing through some ritzy section of town, I come across this necklace. It sparkles a lot. I think it's real gold. You think it's real gold? It's real gold. Let's see it. <laughs> I know what gold looks like. <laughs> if it's legit, can we say it's from all of us? Ha! You find your own damn bribes. How you doing? Fine. Ellie? Fine. Thanks for coming back for me. My friend's problems are my problems. <laughs> You're such a sap. All right, how about, uh... My friends can't get out of their own damn way. It's better. Hands in the air, I 
I shoot this one too? Don't you do it, Ellie. Get out of here. Stand up! Now! Don't you fucking dare! Shut the fuck up! Oh. Fuck. All right. Stop! Stop! Toss your weapon. Toss your weapon! Fuck! No. No. I know why you killed Joel. He did what he did to save me. There is no cure because of me. I am the one that you want. Just let him go. You killed my friends. We let you both live. And you wasted it. Jesus. Of all the times for Ellie to disarm, she does it now? <laughs> oh, that was her chance right there, man. Abby's not wrong. That's the problem here, right? Like, none of this is good. None of it is good. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so, okay, cool. All our friends are dead. Now it's just you and me. And Tommy. And I've, I've, I've lost every. Dina's still alive. Dina is still alive. Okay, we still got Dina in the back corner. But of course, Ellie's not going to think about that because this is a very like tunnel vision traumatic moment, right? She just watched Jesse die. Tommy's get at gunpoint with the person who killed Joel. So here is how we have to think about this. Abby has showed up here. Not on Ellie's terms. I think if Ellie runs into Abby in the aquarium, this goes entirely different. The reason this is all messed up is because Abby showed up. And I think we have to look at Ellie reacting the way that she did as in some part due to a trauma response. The last time she saw Abby, she was doing the exact same thing. The circumstances, again, when we think about trauma responses, our brain registers what happens in the environment and what all the contextual factors are when the traumatic thing happens. So if we go back to when Joel died, we have Joel basically dead on the floor. We have Abby standing over him. And we're in it. We're in this like isolated room. So here we are in an isolated room. Jesse's dead next to us. Tommy's on the floor. Abby standing over him. The whole thing is going to send Ellie into a spiral. And she is not going to think straight. Anybody who thinks that Ellie is going to think straight in this moment is wrong. There is no way she thinks straight here. This is going to catch her so off guard, her brain's going to go haywire. And we see her basically have a flight response. She talks a big game like she's a fight response, but I think Ellie has to will herself into that. I think Ellie's gut check response is to fly. Or freeze. And we see it happen here. And it's these moments, these little moments that catch you off guard that pierce through all the work you've done. You cannot let your guard down for one second in this world. And then all of a sudden, here comes Abby, not on, on Ellie's terms, and boom, trauma. So even though I kind of gave Ellie a little bit of shit there for dropping the gun... When you sit down and think about it, it makes complete sense why she did that. She wasn't ready to see Abby here. It's brutal stuff, man. Tommy's trying to take care of Ellie. The thing is, again, this is easy for us to judge this because we're not in this moment with Ellie. I wouldn't expect her to do any of this, but if you read the situation here, Abby standing with the gun pointed at Tommy and Ellie with the gun like this, Ellie has the perfect opportunity to shoot Abby, but she's presented with the, do I shoot Abby at the expense of possibly losing Tommy? I don't think Abby's going to have the reflexes to get up and point the gun at Ellie if Ellie, if Ellie pulls the gun down and fires. So Ellie could have killed Abby here. She hesitates because of the trauma. And because she probably sees Tommy and is like, no, I can't lose him too. But I actually think that if she, if she had thought about the fact that she still has Dina, she might be willing to pull that trigger. Or at least think of it that way. But again, 
We don't know that she'd hit the target. That's exactly right, Ika. We don't know that she'd hit the target. We don't know that Abby's going to hit the target. All of this, there's, it's too high stress for anybody to make a good decision here. This is all raw emotion. That's all it is. And for us to expect anything other than that, it, you know, a lot of times this is the kind of thing where people will look back on moments like this in hindsight and they'll say, oh, this should have gone better. Sure, yeah, when you're cooled off and your prefrontal cortex is online and you're all just, you know, you're just cool sitting at your desk thinking about it. But if you're in this moment, it's raw emotion, reflex, and training. That's it. And we don't even know what kind of training Abby has. And we know that Ellie doesn't have training. Ellie has experience. She doesn't have training. This is why people go through boot camp. It's to override shit like this so that you actually have some training that you can kick into gear as a reflex when the, when the emotion is high. But these people haven't been trained in that way. We can't expect anything other than what happens. And that's why judging ourselves in hindsight can be so dangerous because every single one of us, if we, don't have, if we are in the exact same moment with the exact same training and circumstance as Ellie and as Abby, we, we basically do the same thing or we do whatever happens. We're on autopilot in these moments. And I think people, people get really harsh about this moment. And I, I just don't know that you can be. What happens, happens here. Tommy knows that it was a bad idea. As soon as Ellie throws the gun, he, know, he knows it's done. He tried. But El Ellie's, Ellie's too into her, into her trauma reflex. So again, that's all to say that this, this circumstance that happens here makes sense as much as we may hate this.